Hello, I'm Vera Ludwig. Thanks for watching my channel. Thanks for watching this video. I'm going to talk about sex today and the science of sex. So the question I'm addressing today is, does sex actually make you happy? So while you can probably answer that for yourself, we can also look into science. And you might think, well, this is one of those questions that people are trying to answer in science that are just like obvious. So of course, sex makes you happy, right? But the picture might be a bit more complex. So um, you find, uh, in fact, that when you look in the scientific literature, that people who are happier on average also have more sex. And on average, they also have better sex. But of course, you never know which way this association goes. So it could be that sex causes people to be happier, but it could also be that people who are happier have more sex. Or it could be that there's a third variable, like for example, health, that leads to this link between the two. For example, people who are very healthy might have more sex and might be happier than people who are unhealthy or less healthy. And so this might lead to this uh, artificial link between sex and happiness. So to really find out if sex really makes people happy, you have to tell them to have sex and then measure if it actually makes them happy, right? Like an experiment. Um, and this is what uh, Löwenstein and colleagues did. I don't know if I pronounce him correctly. In a study that was published 2015. And that was the first study that really tested causally, okay, what happens if we if we instruct people to have more sex, is that really going to make them happier? So they took, uh, they invited couples who were willing to change uh, their pattern of sexual relating. They were all legally married between 35 and 65 years old. And so they told half of these people in the treatment group, they told them to double the frequency with which they have sex. And in the control group, they didn't give any instructions about that. So in the treatment group, one thing I should mention is that um, people who were recruited for the study, they were um, having sex at least once a month and maximum three times a week. So because the authors thought that if you have sex already three times a week and then you double it, um, and if you have sex even more, then maybe at some point it's not really serving you anymore. So you can answer this question for yourself <laughs> where you have your preferences. Um, but this is how the authors uh, decided. So, very interestingly, uh, what came out was that the group that was told to double their frequency of sex, they actually reported having a lower mood throughout the entire study. The study lasted three months, so people were filling in every day um, how they felt, uh, if they experienced a range of positive and negative um, emotions or aff affect. Um, and indeed, the people on average felt worse in the group that was instructed to have more sex. Isn't that strange? Did they not succeed to have more sex? No, they did. They did actually have more sex, not double, but they increased it quite significantly compared to the control group. So what the authors conclude is that if you just force yourself to have sex, if someone externally tells you that you should have more sex, that is actually not going to be beneficial. So they also find that the treatment group, the ones who were asked to increase the frequency of sex, that they actually experienced less desire for sex and they enjoyed sex less than the other group. So it seems like there was suddenly a, an external motivator, like it's suddenly a duty, we have to have sex. And people were even paid for participating in the study. And they weren't paid for having more sex, but to participate in the study itself, to fill in the questionnaires. So it might have felt to them as if they were being paid for sex. And that might reduce um, the motivation to actually have sex and like really intrinsically valuing it for what it is. One thing I should mention is that the groups were not perfectly balanced. So the, the author did a, did a great job in randomizing them. That's all perfect, but still one group the treatment group uh, had some characteristics that already predisposed them to having a lower mood, like they were less extroverted, more anxious, a little bit. So this is one limitation of the study um, that we have to keep in mind when interpreting is it, but still it's interesting that the effect was even in the, in the wrong direction, so people actually reporting lower mood. 
so. This suggests that just telling yourself, okay, you should have more sex is not going to help you. Like some books suggest and they're like, yeah, just do it, you know, just uh, have more sex and it's going to help your relationship. Um, but the study suggests that that's not true. Instead, uh, maybe what you can do is create uh, um, conditions or situations where it's more likely that you will have sex again and then when, that you will enjoy the sex. Okay, like go, going to a hotel or getting a babysitter. So um, there was one other study by Cash, Dan and colleagues published 2017 and they actually looked at what happens when people have sex naturally. So no one tells them to have sex, but they just, um, they, they just observed people over a period of time. They were all college students, um, not all in committed relationships. So typical student population uh, between 18 and 63 years. And yeah, 63 years, old students sometimes. Um, but in fact, uh, they looked at um, diary entries, um, entries. So how uh, did you have sex today? Um, how was the sex? And how do you feel today? Like different uh, reporting on different types of emotions, etc. And what they found was that when people reported having sex on one day, then that predicted that they would have more positive affect and less negative affect the next day. And they would also report on the next day that their day, the day was more meaningful. And the other way around, this wasn't true. So people who were happy today did not have sex tomorrow. So it wasn't predicted in this direction. And this suggests that indeed um, having sex leads to higher happiness and even more meaning in life, whereas um, the other way around is not necessarily true. So also they looked at sexual pleasure. So if people had more sexual pleasure in their encounters, they also felt that also predicted how happy uh, they felt the next day. And specifically uh, in people who had very close relationships, that was helpful. So in the next day they had positive effect and also um, um, were feeling that their life was more meaningful. So if you're close to your partner and then you have like great sex with a lot of pleasure, this will be very helpful for you feeling that there's a sense of meaning in your life and that you feel good and less bad. Okay, so this is the answer to whether sex makes you happy from a scientific perspective. Uh, thank you for watching my channel. I'm going to post a lot more videos like this soon because I love talking about sex. I love talking about science. <laughs> so this is perfect for me. So please subscribe to my channel and click this little, I think, bell next to it to be notified uh, when new videos come out. And uh, thank you for liking my video, if you do. <laughs> and I see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.